Consider the vectors u, v, and w, where notice all three components are known for vectors u and v, and for vector w, the third component is the variable k. We're asked what value of k will cause the set of vectors to be linearly dependent. So there's a couple things to remember here. If a set of vectors is linearly dependent, then at least one vector is a linear combination and in the span of the other vectors. And also, two vectors are linearly independent if they are not scalar multiples of one another. So if we first take a look at vectors u and v, we can determine they are not scalar multiples of one another since three times three is equal to nine, but four times three is not equal to negative 10. And since they're not scalar multiples, the set of vectors u and v are linearly independent, and therefore we can write vector w as a linear combination of vectors u and v if the set of vectors u, v, and w are linearly dependent, which means there must exist two scalars, which we will call c sub one and c sub two, such that c sub one times vector u plus c sub two times vector v must equal vector w. Again, we know this must be true because the set of three vectors is linearly dependent and the set of vectors containing only u and v are linearly independent. So from here, let's write c sub one times vector u, which is the vector four, negative 10, nine, plus c sub two times vector v, which is the vector negative seven, four, three, must equal vector w, which is the vector two, negative 62 sevenths, and then k. And now let's write the corresponding system of equations, where the first equation is four c sub one minus seven c sub two equals two. The second equation is negative 10 c sub one plus four c sub two equals negative 62 sevenths. And the third equation is nine c sub one plus three c sub two equals k. Notice here we have a system of three equations with two unknowns if we were only considering c sub one and c sub two, which means to find the values of c sub one and c sub two, we can set up and solve a system using just the first two equations. And then once we find the values of c sub one and c sub two, we can come back and determine the value of k. And this should be nine c sub one. So let's write the augmented matrix for the system containing just the first two equations, where the first row is four, negative seven, two, and the second row is negative 10, four, negative 62 sevenths. The next step is to write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form, which I've already done, where the first row is one, zero, one, and the second row is zero, one, two sevenths. We now know from the first row that C sub one is equal to one, and the second row indicates that C sub two is equal to two sevenths. So now that we know C sub one and C sub two, we can use a third equation to determine the value of K. To find the value of K, we have nine times C sub one, which is one, plus three times C sub two, which is two sevenths equals K. The common denominator is going to be seven. Nine is equal to 63 sevenths. We have 63 sevenths plus six sevenths, which is equal to K, and K is equal to 69 sevenths. So this is what the question is asking for. But let's also take the time and write vector W as a linear combination of vectors U and V. Since C sub one is one, we would have the equation one times vector u, which is a vector four, negative 10, nine. And since c sub two is two sevenths, we have plus two sevenths times vector v, which is the vector negative seven, four, three. And this must equal vector w, where vector w is the vector two, negative, 62 sevenths and K, which is 69 sevenths. And you may want to take a moment and just verify that this equation is true. 
I hope you found this helpful.